Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming for the Repsol breakfast talk this morning. I hope that you, you will enjoy and be entertained by the coffee and, and the topics that we're going to be speaking about today. My name is Homayun Bagheri. I'm the account manager for polypropylene in the Dach area. I used to be in the technology center at Repsol, where my colleagues at the technical uh, assistance and development department have do been doing many of the innovations that we have at Repsol Chemicals. So today I'll be standing for my colleagues here communicating some of the innovations that they brought about in Repsol Chemicals. Um, the, chemi the, the packaging and specifically plastics industry has been undergoing many changes and we are facing many challenges in the last few years. Many of you are available, you're aware of this because you're in the industry. And uh, Repsol has been trying very hard to anticipate some of the changes that are happening in the market in order to be able to respond to the needs that our clients would have. And today, in the packaging area, what I will introduce to you a little bit is the areas in which we have been trying to bring about some of these innovations and the kind of products that we have available for you. Our range of, um, of polyolefins can range from high-density polyethylene to low-density polyethylene, metallocenic, linear, uh, uh, low-density polyethylene, uh, EVA and EBA copolymers, and also a full range of PP polymers from homopolymer, copolymers, and random polymers. And as I was saying, you know, we're very aware of the changing dynamics and changing tectonic shift that are occurring in the packaging industry. And we have a framework in which we want to prioritize what are the main goals you want to achieve in the new innovations that we bring about in packaging. And of course, for us, um, safety vis-a-vis -vis the consumer is one of the highest priorities we have. So from our perspective, any product that does not take that into the fullest account is not even worth considering. So this is the first priority we have in our product development. Closely linked to the topic of or the issue of uh, safety for, uh, for the clientele or the consumers is sustainability. These are two closely linked issues. Um, the world is going through many um, realizations that our industry has to respond to the susta sustainability requirements that uh, the consumer market is requiring from us. And, and we are trying to respond to this to the fullest extent that we can by looking at the kind of innovations where we can contribute in this respect. However, given these issues, we always also have to have the properties that we require for the applications and the products that we place in the market. And this, this is a high requirement of our clientele, of course, of our consumers. And within this perspective, not only uh, performance, but we also have to do the design or the aesthetics to make these products um, appealable, appealing to our consumers. And least but, uh, last but not least, the cost effectiveness of these products are important in order to be able to be competitive in the, in the market. From these topics I was mentioning, I'll start with uh, food safety because this is a topic that is very close at heart to us in Repsol. We are quite dominant in the, the Iberian market and it's a very demanding market when it comes to food safety. Uh, so we put a very high priority on this and as a European producer, of course, we also try to go way beyond the requirements that are, are placed upon producers in terms of legislation. There are four topics that I will touch upon briefly. Um, in terms of food safety, um, we have a food safety assessment service, which uh, addresses um, any questions that our clients may have with regard to food safety. Uh, we have gone through a certification process to go beyond what is required in the market in terms of food, space, food safety certification. I'll go into that in a minute. And we have two projects I want to talk to you about, not to Rick and McRoyal. I'll go into it in a second. Um, actually. I will just explain them to you here. So the Naturep uh, project, um, as some of you in the industry may be aware, most plastics or most polymers are going to have substances in them which are subject to specific uh, migration limits, or essentially you have to have substances below a particular threshold. But we at Repsol consider that going below a threshold is not sufficient for us. We want to make substitutions with material or additives and substances that are in our polymers so that it's not only a matter of issue of thresholds anymore, but that these compounds are not uh, present at all inside the polymer. So we have a program where we evaluate 
different kinds of additives or substitutes or processes in which we can eliminate anything that is subject to specific migration limits. And this is a project that is in an advanced stage and uh, high priority at Repsol. Another project that is an interesting perspective and quite related to this, um, many of you will know that plastics contain some level of mineral oils. This is a natural content that all plastics will have. And all producers have to control the content of uh, mineral oils that will be in their, in their material to make sure that these are below a threshold. This is not an easy task to do. It requires quite technical expertise, uh, uh, advanced methods, and we've been developing several methods to go beyond what is required in order to be able to have a very high, precise, and repeatable uh, control and detection of mineral oils so that we can assure our, our consumers that the levels of uh, mineral oils are way below what is required in the market. I would like to come back to the food safety issue that I was mentioning to you. Repsol, as, um, as I said, as is one of the first, well, it is the first producer that has gone through FSC, FSC 22,000 certification. This is a food safety certification usually required of food manufacturers, companies that are handling food. But we have decided that we want to bring back one step in the supply chain in order that even our plants are certified for food safety. And in this sense, we are taking a leadership position in the market, going beyond what is, would be required, not only having food safety for the product, for the plastics themselves, but for the manufacturing process that leads to this product. And we're quite proud of this achievement that we've had at Ripsol. And all our three plants are now certified by the FSSC uh, 22,000. Coming back to performance issues, weight and thickness reduction has become a quite a priority for, for the market because this has implications in terms of energy, um, energy savings and performance. So there are three examples I'm going to just briefly mention of the kind of things in which we go towards food re uh, weight reduction. One is replacing other materials for things that would usually be much heavier, for example, a project that we worked on and have successfully placed in the market of butane um, tanks, portable butane tanks, which have a part of plastic polypropylene in them, which makes them much lighter and hence energy savings and easier for the consumer. We have projects on HDPE to make the achieve higher stiffness in bottled products for uh, with food safety requirements. Um, our polypropylene range has has developed uh, polypropylene products that can have containers that are much more resistant to impact and pressure while not having to increase the thickness of these products. And finally, through the film, our film range, we've concentrated highly on achieving products such as our metallocene range, which have high transparency and resistance at the same time. And coming back to energy savings, energy savings is not only achieved by weight reduction. This is a transport issue that you you win that way. There's also ways in which you can have energy savings during the processing when you are in a factory and you're pr producing your material by having properties in the, pro the plastic themselves that reduce your energy um, use. Examples are within our polypropylene range. If we have products that have lower injection temperature, so this is a direct energy saving. Uh, this also concomitantly reduces your cycling time during the production and it also allows you, because of the higher fluidity, to have more complex pieces or molding injections that you want to achieve. Similarly, within our film products, um, both polyethylene and polypropylene, we have developed products in which the sealing temperature in which the packaging has to seal is lower. This leads to one, once again, faster processing, and second, lower energy use. And by talking to our clients, we've seen that that has had quite an effect in their processing times and their costs, and it's become quite a popular um, uh, range of grades within our uh, consumer base and, and, and clients. And finally, uh, these are more technical matters that I've been speaking about, uh, but our products are not just technical issues, but they also have an emotional impact on the final consumers. Consumers want to have a sort of an emotional bond or appealing uh, reaction to the product. So within the industry, of course, the aesthetics of these products are very important. And examples in which we have placed 
more focus on these aspects are, for example, our newly developed Repsol polyethylene ultracreen products in which you have high transparency and very low gel levels, uh, rigid, rigid packaging by extrusion blow molding for buffers in which you require some transparency to see the product inside, and also matte effect in packaging uh, due to the reason that many consumers want to have more homely or comfortable and not necessarily shiny aspects to their packaging. And maybe as a last example before I leave you to return to your, your discussions, um, I'll give you an example where responding to all these different constraints within the industry requires to integrate these challenges into one product. So it's not usually one of these challenges I was talking about, but you try to integrate them into one product. And a good example of that is where flexible packaging is going and where we've been developing products for this within the polypropylene range. Um, so these products need to have high tenacity. They, so this is performance. They need to have things like uh, ability to be sterilized. This is a food safety issue, low gel levels. This is an aesthetic issue. Um, and so all these things come into together in order to have a product that has the sufficient level of uh, innovation in order to be able to respond to market demands. And at Repsol, we have working on several products such as this, where we try to integrate these challenges. And finally, and, and I would like to invite you to attend some of the other talks that are here, because what you will see throughout the pattern of the more specialized talks that we have today and throughout the, this, this, um, this meeting is that uh, at Repsol, sustainability and the circular economy is something that we take very seriously in all our product range, but also the technical aspects of the new innovations that we require. So we will have, as I was speaking today, a talk on food packaging, but we have uh, an expert talk on automotive industry, how we, we address these issues in that industry, 3D printing, which is quite an innovative way to use polyolefins for, for the new ways in which people produce objects, um, food safety, in order to go into more details how we are approaching this issue, uh, and the circular economy, where we've been looking very hard at uh, ways in which we can improve the, the ecological footprint that our products have in the environment, including recycling and the potential for degradation of our material and biodegradation of our material in the environment. And finally, our healthcare range, which is a highly specialized arena for developing products for uh, uh, health issues and pharma industry that require very high stringent health issues. Okay. And with this, I thank you for your attention. And then if you have any questions, our experts are throughout this, uh, this place here, and you can discuss with them any further questions you have. Thank you very much.